Hi everyone, welcome to Still Waters. When I was a little boy, my mum used to take me to an old colonial Anglican church, one of the oldest in the country. Sometimes out of boredom, I would just wander off from the back pews into the churchyard to just read uh, inscriptions on gravestones. I sometimes found them more interesting than the sermons that flowed from the pulpit. Over time, this developed into a kind of a hobby so that by the time I went to the UK to study as well as to work, I sometimes found myself wandering into churchyards just to read tombstones. Some of the inscriptions I found extremely insightful, others I found extremely funny. Here's one of the funny ones. Stranger, do not pass me by. As you are now, so once was I. As I am now, soon you shall be. So prepare for death and follow me. There's another one that I found quite hilarious. Down in this grave do I lie, back to back my wife and I. When the last trumpet the air shall fill, if she's getting up, I'm lying still. 31 years ago in 1989, a God-fearer and believer by the name of Stephen Covey wrote probably one of the most influential and best-selling books on leadership and business in the last century. It was called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Now, some of you may have actually read the book, others may have seen the title somewhere. It is still a bestseller today, having sold more than 40 million copies. I remember picking up that book to read many years ago and realizing that I actually knew at least three out of those seven habits of highly effective people and was already practicing them. How did I know about these? Well, it came really from reading tombstones as well as reading the Bible. So let me just share with you three of Stephen Covey's uh, habits of highly successful people that I glean from reading tombstones. Here's the first one that he mentioned. It's called, begin with the end in mind. This means that we must first see our future then only can we plan our present. Now, tombstones tell us that every life has to end sometime. They tell us that we don't know when we're going to go. We don't know how we're going to go. But we do know that one day we're all going to go. And the Bible says exactly the same thing. Hebrews 9, 27, It is appointed unto men once to die, and after that, the judgment. Now, let me ask you this question. If you don't know how much runway space you have left, how are you going to use your runway space today? Well, the answer is, it all depends. If you are earthbound and you think you're earthbound, then the only thing to do on the runway is to run as fast as you can, to live as fast as you can, to do things faster even, to fill up the runway space as much as you can. Why? Because one day it's all going to end. That's why before this MCO, we were all Russians. We were rushing here, rushing there. Now during the MCO, we are all zoomies. We're zooming here, zooming there, because we're trying to fill up as much as we can. But supposing I were to tell you that you are not earthbound, but you can fly, then the length of the runway space becomes immaterial. We don't need the whole of the runway because one day we're going to fly above and beyond that runway. You see, we need to begin with the end in mind. You were not born for this earth. You were born to fly. You were born for greatness, not yours, but God's greatness in you. Therefore, develop every color you can. Be filled with all the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Share God's love. Share the gospel. Don't just become consumed with your life. You were born to fly away. Acts 20 verse 24, the Apostle Paul says exactly the same thing. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry I receive from the Lord Jesus Christ, which is to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. He had this end in mind from the very beginning. So for each and every one of us, begin with the end in mind. You are destined to fly. Here's the second truth that I gleaned from tombstones that was articulated by Stephen Covey in his seven habits. The second habit is think win-win. The Bible tells us that if we teach ourselves to be winners and think win-win, we will never be losers. Reading tombstones often tells us who are the winners and who are the losers in life. 
on the gravestone of Dr. Martin Luther King, Luther King Jr., the great civil rights leader in America. The inscription reads, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. That's the inscription of a winner. Nearby is the inscription on the tombstone of a soldier who is a loser, which read, here lies Captain John Smith, killed by accidental gunfire when his servant was cleaning his rifle. And at the bottom, well done, good and faithful servant. You see, thinking win-win means doing whatever happens to us. God has already got you and me covered. We are already saved by grace through faith. If we die, we get heaven. If we live, we get heaven on earth. We can't lose. Romans 8 verse uh, 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Because he has won, we will always win. That's why always think win-win. Here's the third Stephen Covey, seven habits uh, I learned from the tombstone. The third habit, put first things first. That is so important. You see, there are many important things we must do in life. There are also many urgent things we are to do in life. But the third habit tells us the things that we must do first are the things that are both important as well as urgent. The lesson comes from tombstones. Because people die at different ages, and you see the ages on the tombstones. Babies, youth, uh, young parents. Death can come very suddenly and unexpectedly. Here's a tombstone inscription of someone who died unexpectedly. Here lies Johnny Blake. He stepped on the accelerator instead of the brake. Because things can happen very suddenly, always put first things first. Don't do second things first. Don't be like uh, this guy called Bob, who entered the finals of who wants to be a millionaire. And he came to the final question and the quiz master said to him, Bob, there are two parts to this final question and you must get both parts right. It is on history. And in this particular case, the second part is easier than the first. So which part would you like to attempt first? And Bob said, in that case, I'll try part two first. Well, said the quiz master, here is the second part of the question. In what year did it happen? Duh. You get the point? Without knowing the first part, you can't answer the second part. That's why you must always put first things first. What first things? Matthew 6.33 tells us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. What are the first things? Our relationship with God. Don't neglect it. Our relationship within our marriages and our families, don't take them for granted. Our priorities in life, like health, finance, responsibilities, our morals and our taxes, may not be very urgent, but they are very important. Don't ignore them. These then are the three out of the seven habits of highly effective people I glean from reading tombstones as well as the Bible. Begin with the end in mind. Think win-win and put first things first. Did you learn something new today? If you, you did, you too might learn and want to develop the habit of reading tombstones. I trust you've been blessed by this week's Still Waters. Have a great week, everyone, and I look forward to catching up with you on Sunday for our exciting online service. Until then, God's richest blessings be upon you.